Now everybody, in today's video, we're gonna do something extremely illegal. You know, a lot of people tell me all the time, you know, with all my aircraft modifications that we're doing on the channel, Swiss, why don't you make a Q400 with jet engines? Now, that is probably the stupidest idea of ever. We'll get to why that is later, but sure, we can probably pull that off and ruin this airplane. I mean, the Q400 looks very interesting. It is a very interesting plane to fly as passengers. If you ignore the immense amount of noise it creates, it's quite nice to have a high wing airplane after all, because you can see so much outside, unless your view is obstructed by the turboprop engine indeed. You could also just close the window blind. So let's go ahead and experiment around with actually adding a jet engine to this plane for no reason. So this right here is the Q400, and here are some jet engines that we could use. These are right here, the CFM56 from the 737, which will give us a lot of power. But the question now is definitely, where do we put these engines? I mean, first of all, let's get rid of the props right here. So kind of like that. But there's one big problem now. We could remove the prop nacelle, so this part right here. But the thing about the Q400 is that it's built to have a prop engine, so this nacelle is also where the main landing gear sits um, until it falls apart. So the only way for us to actually mount jet engines properly is on top of the wing. So we would have to keep this nacelle part. So I could, you know, I could just lower, there we go, the jet engines and put them on top of the wing. That's literally the only option to make this, uh, to make this work. So uh, good. What I would probably do next though, is maybe try and make this nacelle right here a bit more streamlined. After all, here are still some trouble prop bits that we could just get rid of. All we need to do is make sure this thing still holds the landing gear, of course. So here's kind of what I had in mind. Look, kind of like that. So that is a bit more streamlined and will house now our landing gear. Yes, this is a very unpractical design, but it's kind of the only way we can at all make this work. Now, of course, it's about time to get to the actual engine modeling here in the flight sim, and that's going to be probably a bit of an issue here. So we're adding these jet engines right here. This is going to be very interesting. Mm, I think we should be good now. And I kind I really hate it actually. Either way, let's see if it flies. That's a good start. All right, so welcome aboard our extremely powerful version of the Q400. Now, the CFM engines are very powerful indeed. In fact, we've massively overpowered this airplane and it looks overly stupid as well. Good. So let's see if I can turn on the jet engines of this plane. This is a very realistic, I don't know, the uh, uh, Q400 actually, so the circuit breakers even work. Um, either way, let's see if I can turn on these engines. Generally, I have no idea. Select engine number one, select start. Oh, yeah, that is on. That is on. That is hilarious. Ladies and gentlemen, engine number one is running. Uh, good. Let's turn on the other engine as well. Let's do it. Yes. Wonderful. That works. <laughs> <laughs> that is very quick. This add-on is so funny. You can like add passengers in individually. So we know the boarding pass and the name of the poor people who are going to be absolutely powered into the air now. Can we close the door, please? How do we, how do we do that? Uh... Yep, there we go. I've just closed the door. Wonderful. And something we can definitely tell is that this plane sounds very different now. It is a jet engine airplane. It is a little bit scary, but I kind of like the views from out of here. Look, I mean, we can see uh, our engine here on top of the wing. Very good. Let's go ahead and see if we can start taxiing, giving a little bit of power. We're right now in the low ground idle, which is the taxiing mode. And as you can see, we can start moving. And this plane functions just as normal. So we go on our taxiway right here and we can prepare for flight mode. Now, the funny thing is that this plane still thinks it's a turboprop. So when we give full prop, it actually makes these engines work. I don't even know how it properly works, but the prop switch, which actually selects the angle of the props, uh, they don't really, wouldn't really do anything in the jet airplane. For some reason, it does something here. This airplane is very confused, especially the prop RPM doesn't work. The only thing we have is the RPM of the actual compressors moving and the fuel flow, which we have 
very much increased. Either way, we've made this airplane extremely, extremely quick. After all, the Q400 weighs significantly less than the 737, the airplane that we stole our engines from. So we've made an extremely high powered uh, Q400. Let's go ahead and put this airplane into flight mode. There we go. Yeah, there we go. We're now in flight mode. Let's go ahead and make sure to get the gust lock removed and let's go full power in our airplane. And it's absolutely incredible what it's able to do. At full, full power, 32,000 pounds of thrust, this thing moves like crazy. Yeah, it turns out we should have probably used other engines to power this plane. Maybe from like an ERJ. We've made this thing into a superpower, but what works still is as you can see the landing gear as it's nicely popped up. We're now at 320. Jesus Christ, we've made this airplane way too powerful. 300. Yes, we've created the best airplane in the world. Look at that climb performance. If I let go of the yoke right here, we can climb at this rate without any... I mean, the Sky King would have loved this. Look at this. We have made this airplane way too powerful indeed. Now, granted, um, we have given this plane a flight time of only one hour and 30 minutes at max with these jet engines on, but we're able to be so fast that it really doesn't matter. Look at that. Yes, wonderful. We're now already at 20,000 feet and we're climbing even higher. We have made the Q400, normally a relatively slow and sluggish airplane, the most powerful airplane in the world for no reason. Um, so we can definitely fly anywhere we'd like. And I mean that genuinely. I mean, the Q400 has always been a plane that can operate at, you know, smaller runways. Smaller airports with shorter runways, but it can now definitely fly to the shortest runway in the world. All we need to do is put out the flaps. And of course, this airplane has reverse thrust. I mean, the original one has one too, but this plane, absolutely no worry. In fact, I think we can activate it right now already. So this is idle. Put this into reverse thrust mode. Oh yeah. All right, there we go. Oh, the f okay. Let's try again. Wonderful. Shh, it's fine. It's fine. You can do. You can do hard landings. I'm pretty sure. Let's go ahead and stop now. There we go. And we are able to stop really quickly. Why? Because we have reverse thrust. Please work reverse thrust. Um. Oh, it's a bit of a confusing reverse. It worked! This is truly a brilliant idea. Oh. No, actually, this is an extremely stupid idea. By the way, uh, this is how you pull reverse thrust. It actually does stop very quickly. No, I mean, we kind of ruined the existence of the Q400. It's supposed to be a turboprop airplane, and making it a jet airplane would not improve it. There are positives to actually having turboprops. For example, they are actually more efficient on shorter routes below 200 nautical miles, and also they offer more versatility. Also, they're extremely extremely more cheaper to operate because the maintenance is not as hard to pull off uh, as in comparison to these multi-million CFM 56 engines. This is why airlines use it. And putting jet engines onto this thing basically makes it no better than like a CRJ or an ERJ-145 or something. This is a pointless thing, because the whole point of having a Q400 is these turboprop engines. I mean, this airplane otherwise isn't very good in comparison to modern jets. We have a relatively old cramped cockpit with not a lot of automation or any systems that are extremely good. The only thing that's kind of cool is having this latch right here that we can open as an emergency exit, but that's very much it. Yes, okay, the idea of having a high wing airplane is kind of cool, but this is an extremely hateable idea. Um, anyway, let's, uh, we can definitely take off from out of here. In order to pull that off, we need to put the power of this plane into flight idle. Let's do that. Yes, look at that. No problem taking off for sure. There we go. Yes, look at that acceleration, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we probably don't even need half the power to properly fly this plane. We could fly this thing on like 50% power and we have enough to get us both into the air and out of it. But hey, we've made this airplane significantly faster, but we've also made it worse in a sense. So good job there. So buddy, we have definitely not made the world a single bit better today by adding these jet engines. The only advantage I see with the Q400 having these engines is maybe so that broken propeller pieces don't crash into the cabin when the landing gear collapses once again. Other than that, this is pretty poor. Let's go ahead and land. We're really fast. These engines are so powerful, it's hard for this airplane not to go fast. So uh, let's see if we do a landing. Maybe a smooth one. Yeah, wonderful. Something like that. Let's go ahead and put the reverse thrust on now. Come on. Yeah, there we go. That's what I like to see. Now, it's hard to figure them out. There we go. Now we can stop. And look at the stopping power on our reverse thrust. Pretty incredible, huh? Yeah, this is not in any way better 
Great job, Swiss. So everybody, this is a lesson that we shouldn't reinvent the wheel all the time. So uh, thank you very much for watching this video as I put the window blinds down and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, Guns Killer, R27, James Deram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.